Hello, and welcome to the Adam Kiss Show. Today we have a very special episode talking with my team here at Adam Kiss Productions. And without further ado, let's get right into it. My name is Alexis, host of The Adam Kiss Show, and today I'm going to be handing it over to Adam, and we're going to be introducing or talking with uh, social media coordinators, um, as well as me, the social media manager, and um, our founder, Adam Kiss. <laughs> well, thanks so much. Uh, thanks, everyone. And today I'm really excited to talk to everybody about um, why I started my own production company, Adam Kiss Productions, and we're going to be talking with my wonderful team here my absolutely incredible team uh, about why they're a part of the company, a little bit about them and uh, all of that. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to them. Uh, hello, I am Easton. I was in a previous episode. I am one of the social media coordinators and I'm going to pass it off to Issa. <laughs> Thank you, Easton. Uh, I was in the past episode too, like no, in the seventh episode, mm -hmm. and I'm really glad to be here. I'm a social co social media coordinator too, and I'm really glad. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, and of course I'm I'm Alexis, and I'm the social media manager, and I'm super excited to get to work with an awesome team. Um, we have some really great social media coordinators, so I'm so happy they get to be on. We get to be all all on together. We officially know our titles because after the last yes. episode, we needed to nail that down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, this is actually the this is a very exciting day because this is the first day that we're all on together at once. You know, Ooh. I know in today's world, it's so hard to find a time when everyone can can be online at the same time, especially in the art world. So um, that, that's definitely a big accomplishment. So I guess I'll start off by talking about. Uh, why I decided to found a production company, uh, which is uh, definitely an interesting topic. So I had, I'd always been into acting, uh, singing and the performing arts. Yeah. And recently, it was really during the pandemic when I kind of started to create my own things, when, when a lot of other things weren't happening, there wasn't that much opportunity. Um, so that's kind of how it started. I started to kind of create my own short films. I didn't necessarily uh, create a production company. I mean, I just kind of started doing some simple simple things. And then kind of um, it's there's there's no real moment, I would say, when I just start said, oh, now I have a production company for sure. It's really just I kind of just started doing things um, and it kind of just the projects kept getting bigger. And then I had this idea, as we've talked about a million times now to do this a feature film. My last words, I'm going to keep giving it a plug. Uh, we're currently in editing and <laughs> it's definitely going to be uh, hitting the festival circuit in the fall and we're going to be releasing it soon. So definitely stay tuned for updates with that. Uh, but the whole point was I started, you know, writing this script for this feature film. Um, I knew that that would be a much bigger deal. So I kind of officially started this production company, uh, Adam Kiss Productions. And um, I started, you know, I, I had to assemble a team uh, for the actual production. So I assembled a crew. Uh, I assembled, you know, obviously uh, actors for the production. And basically, once you have that and you're doing a production, you have a production company and the rest is just a formality. So um, really, I mean, it's something that anybody can technically do. Uh, it can be as small or big, you know, it can be as big as Marvel, you know, Netflix or or Adam Kiss Productions, which is clearly, you know, uh, headed to be bigger than all of those uh, production companies. <laughs> um, we're, we're clearly on our way to overtaking them in, in a year. <laughs> uh, a year or two at our conservative estimates. <laughs> So yeah, it was really just um, born out of uh, a desire to create my own content, kind of make my own opportunities. And yeah, so uh, I'd love to now pass it on. Uh, why, why don't you, since we're going in this order, why don't you start Easton with uh, why you decided to join us here at Adam Kiss Productions? Yeah, so I, I basically, I moved to Atlanta. I'm in Atlanta, hi. Uh, to pursue <laughs> basically, uh, every angle of the entertainment industry, namely acting, but I had always been taught that learning everything you can about doing a production, and I learned this in theater, but I'm applying it to film, learning everything you can is going to make you uh, 
easier to work with and more valuable to work with, I guess, and maybe even more fun to work with. Um, so I applied, I believe, um, on backstage, I think it was, uh, I saw that they were looking for a social media, uh, I think, I think it was just called social media something. I don't think it was coordinator at that point, but I applied for that. And, uh, normally when I apply for a bunch of things on backstage, normally I never hear back, but I actually heard back from Adam. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm no, like, the, oh, typical, okay, cool. the typical radio silence, you know. Yeah, typical radio silence usually. And usually they look and they're like, oh, you have no experience. I don't actually want you. Sometimes they don't look and, you're, and I'm like, I don't have much experience. And then they never talk to me again. And then it's <laughs> like, okay. But um, I was talking to Adam and I, I was honest. I was like, I don't have much experience. I think I've maybe done some things, but I can't particularly pick out like, ah, oh, yes, at this time I did social media. And he was like, that's cool because <laughs> uh, it's about learning and, and uh, anyone can learn to do it. And I just want to work with nice people. And I was like, <laughs> I'm a nice person. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you're actually very good, Aston. Like, <laughs> yeah, I thought you had a lot of experience. <laughs> <laughs> no, no that, that, that really sounds uh that sounds great because yeah that's that's so true i mean I, I don't care about you know experience i care about you know working with people who are you know eager who, who who are passionate people and i think that's really the most important thing oh yeah oh yeah and i i was definitely like a little bit anxious like at first once i actually got the job because it was like oh boy here i go i don't know what i'm doing but it's it's been pretty fun um i were like, I kind of want to say it's been easy, but you know, there are good days and bad days. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. So, Hopefully, yeah Hopefully more good than bad. Hopefully more good than bad. Oh, definitely more good than bad. <laughs> totally, definitely totally. more good than bad. Nor, we, were, we were just talking about how in, uh, before recording, how in the entertainment industry, everything can get a little bit overwhelming. This is my least overwhelming thing <laughs> like, yeah. right now. And it's it's been nice. It's been fun to work with this team. So, Great, yeah, uh, Isabella. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so first I want to say that I really admire that, for example, you have your idea in your mind and you start doing your productions because I think that's not easy. Like, a lot of people have ideas, but they never do it. So for me, that's very valuable and I really appreciate it. So, and m me being here, uh, I'm from Colombia and I've been acting like, now for several years but my dream it has always been to nah, my dream has always like go to United States you know and acting there and that was something that I was like post like I, I was not making it and I said like I want to start doing something like create something in there because that's my dream I have to do it so I started uh, like searching jobs in backstage and I find one from Adam I think I applied only like two jobs <laughs> and like Adam answered me and I was like what's going on and when I find out I was really happy because it's like a little step for my dream so I'm I'm really happy about it for me it's a little bit like to talk in English and doing all these things because I speak Spanish like my you know my mother language so I get a little bit nervous sometimes because of course it's like weird for me but being here has been like a, like a step for the dream so for me it's I'm really happy about it and working here like finding out with that beautiful people like Adam Alexis and Easton oh it has been really I'm really happy so being here working on social media that I do like I have my own social media and I try to learn things and apply this to here with the cinema and with acting and with beautiful people as you are. Uh, for me, it has been really great. So I'm really happy about it and I'm really happy to be here. Love that. Great. Well, uh, that's great. <laughs> uh, 
couldn't have said it better if, if I wrote it myself. So yeah. <laughs> let's, let's give a shout out to Issa for being so good at graphic design. And also like she came up with a color palette and it's like, yes. like oh, I, am, oh. I am not artistic in that way. And that I was like, okay, okay, we got Issa. Thank God well, we all have our work power over yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. That, that, that's really great. It's, it's the best when you're, we have a team and everyone has their own strengths. Everyone has their own. Uh, strengths and weaknesses so i mean myself included especially myself included <laughs> i definitely have my strengths and, and my weaknesses 100 percent. so <laughs> yes yes great so, so uh, now, why don't we go alexis. Yeah, yeah alexis yeah yeah definitely yeah i've never actually gotten to talk about this and it's pretty cool <laughs> um yeah because i i found adam kiss um on backstage as well i was looking for um i was home for the you know i'd come back home from college and i was looking for a way to work you know within the film industry and um what was pretty interesting is whenever um you know i applied i had done social media before um and so i was like okay well you know maybe i can do social media for um this guy and then whenever i met him you know we hit really hit it off we had a lot of similarities in the way we liked the old movies um we knew a lot we both um talked about which is you know we don't you don't always hear that every day where somebody's really passionate especially about um you know some like the old character uh, like you know carrie grant or different people so um i think that's kind of whenever i knew oh yeah i definitely want to wor work in this um in this industry um and of course you know I, i've never gotten to work um you know in the process of film i think the most i've ever done personally was i was a production assistant for a student film and by production assistant i literally was just like holding stuff so it wasn't anything impressive um so yeah that was that's kind of how i got on and then um yeah i just i've loved it i've loved it you know i I've loved getting to meet all both of you guys. I mean, I know we're talking about some of the social media stuff. It's been so cool. I mean, I've I always, you know, I always, you know, say like, you know, with Isabella, I'm like, I'm like, I've never, you know, done a color palette, never even I didn't even know what a color palette was. So I'm so <laughs> excited about that. And then Easton's my go-to for like the metro, like, you know, metrical for any analytics. Um, so it's been really fun. It's been my first time getting to like um, you know, get to help kind of manage, you know, you two, and you've been so good, you know, good to me and listening. And so I've really mm -hmm. appreciated that and appreciate the opportunity to be on this and, um, you know, to, to be the host um, for a podcast that I feel like I'm really not very good at, but it's fun to interview. Um, I loved interviewing Adam, you get to always have a different topic. And so it's been really fun. So yeah, I really appreciate the opportunity. I think it's been a nice learning experience for all of us because like yes. I didn't know that I'd be that into statistics man like, yes. I, like yeah. there's this <laughs> website we used called Metricool and they give like percentages of when the best time to post are when the most followers are active and I could just stare at that for like yes. and be like oh I could post right <laughs> then and that would get extra followers and oh like it's yeah, so exactly. much fun for me <laughs> well <laughs> That, that's it's, it was great to yeah great to hear from you all about about that topic um thanks for sticking exactly to the script no I, i'm just kidding uh, <laughs> but uh, i think it's i think it's safe to say that then uh, you all enjoy working uh, for adam kiss productions enjoy being a part of the team right yes, yes we really do great well uh so so do i so that makes four of us we're the four musketeers Yes, exactly. Exactly. There yeah. were actually four musketeers. There, there were. The that, that, that's the funny thing is that you know, in all those, in all the books, the illustrations, and all, in all the movies, it's you, you see the four people on the poster or the four people on the cover, and then it says the, the three musketeers. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. There, there, there needs to be like a rewrite of the title, maybe like a plus one in parentheses yeah. or something. Yes. Like, mm. Yeah. Uh, we'll just go into every bookstore and everything and just write plus one on every copy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we won't get arrested. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so, so you know, I'm not advocating anyone does that. So I'm not. Gonna <laughs> <do that. laughs> We at Adam Kiss Productions do not stand by anything you may or yes. may not do as a result of our <laughs> podcast. We, we are not liable. We are not liable. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm curious, like, since we're talking about uh, Adam Kiss Productions in general, like, I know my last words is the focus right now, but like, do you have like 
plans for future films or are you gonna be wanting to release like a film a year or a film every other year or something oh i mean uh, definitely i mean I, I think it's actually um ridiculous in this industry how slow everything is um, yes. Th th yes, there, yes. Are, there are several you know filmmakers and there's a couple a couple no, not many a couple writer directors who do roughly a film a year uh not many i mean yeah, there's a, a lot of people do just a film every three, four, five years. Now, then, then if you're really picky, some people, you know, do a film every 10, 20 years. Uh, that's definitely not me. Um, I mean, yeah, like uh, Terrence Malick, I think between his first and his second film was like 20 years. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> that, that's definitely not me. Um, and then there's there's other people like, yeah, Quentin Tarantino probably does one every three, four years. I think he's going to stop soon. Um, and, you know, it's it really varies. But for me, I, I definitely think at, at least one a year would, would be great. Um, I def I'm not a patient person in that way. <laughs> Patience is definitely not uh, one of my virtues. In certain ways, yeah. But it, with this kind of thing, no, I, I kind of like to, okay, have a script. So when do we start shooting? We start shooting Monday, right? You know, that, that, that's kind of my, my attitude, you know. Oh, it, it needs to be rewritten. Okay, we'll, we'll rewrite it as we're going, you know. It's it's kind of like that, you know, just, just keep going. Um, just keep going forward while you're making changes. Uh, that, that's really the way I look at it. So, yeah, I mean, I, I do have uh, 10 finished screenplays that, I, that I've that i written. So I'm really just looking to now focus on the next one. Um, those were all written within the last uh, two or three years. So um, really, I just chose the, the, the one we just did, My Last Words, because I felt that would be the easiest to produce first. Um, some of them are more complex, you know, much bigger scale. Some of them are in between. So I have kind of all different uh, budget levels, all different genres. Um, but yeah, so I, I have these 10. So I'm definitely looking now to uh, move on to the next one and uh, start working on that kind of um, working on planning that already now, um, as as we're uh, talking to you about, because um, I, I like I believe in kind of starting the next project before you finish the last one. Like um, I forget there was a famous uh, Broadway producer. Um, I think he he lived to be over a hundred. Um, he was the producer of a lot of shows like Damn Yankees and stuff. The original a lot of original classics on Broadway, and I believe uh, he told um, Stephen Sondheim. He was a mentor of Stephen Sondheim. He told him it's important always to have. Uh, a, a, a meeting for a new production the day after the premiere of whatever show you're on because if it's a success and whatever you'll be relaxed if it's a failure at least you feel like you already moved on to the next uh, to the next production so I, I feel like that's so true not just for uh, the stage but for film as well yeah yeah and I have a question about like why do you want to tell the stories like when do you feel that you want to be like a storyteller because you know like making films, you are a storyteller. You're telling something to the people. And what's the most difficult thing maybe about the patients and the most amazing thing? What's the thing that you say, I'm doing this every time, every day, because I love this. Why? Absolutely. You know, I love the whole process. And yeah, you're right. It's all about, you know, telling stories that that's what we are um, as actors, as filmmakers, as I mean, really, as, as people, everybody's a storyteller in, in some way. Um, you know, whether you're just telling the story of, of the, the crazy thing that happened to you, you know, as you were walking down the street to mm -hmm. something else, or, or if you're telling, you know, a, an actual feature screenplay or you're writing a book or, or anything like that. So I, I love kind of the whole process. I, I love the, from start to finish, I, I love the, the writing, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a pretty fast writer. So um, in terms of once I get an idea, it's it's pretty fast, a um, couple of days usually. And then obviously it's it's a lot, it's all about, you know, rewriting. They say scripts aren't written, they're rewritten. That's that's so true. Uh, but you know, I feel like in the beginning, you know, I, I go very fast. So that, that that's kind of an inspired process. And then, you know, it, it's all about uh, I, I also love the process of, you know, it's it's fun to assemble a team, you know, see see it kind of come together in planning. Uh, plan for it and then the, the really the the most fun part is probably actually filming I would say I'm definitely one of those who who likes the filming process a, a lot of um a lot of writer directors don't as much you know that they prefer like you know writing it and then like editing it because in both those scenarios it's just you and and maybe you know and editing a couple other people um so it's it's more relaxed but I kind of like the hectic <laughs> the, the hectic magic of of actually filming 
Uh, that's yeah. great. No, I'm not as as much of a post production person. I, I I prefer already. But then I'm already thinking of the next project. <laughs> it's like well, yeah, once it's filmed, it's okay. Well, let's let's get this edited quick and let's move yeah. on. <laughs> How is editing going? If you can discuss on here. Ah, yes. Well, we, we are much more secretive than, than Marvel, so clearly I cannot know. Yes, uh, yes. There's very little yes. we can reveal. Yes, there, there, there's only so much I can reveal. No, editing's going. It's going good. Um, looking forward to having some, you know, all day sessions soon. Um, to kind of uh, that 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 should be fun. Um, Let's go. Yes, yeah. I'm, exactly. I'm taking one for the team. Uh, um, <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, again, of, of all the processes, I would say probably editing is my least favorite. Um, mm. It's, yeah. uh, be, but having said that, I mean, I, I've talked, I think, a, a little about this, not too much, but uh, what I like in uh, movies is um, these days, like all, all movies look exactly the same. It's, you, you if, if you watch, you know, any movie on, you know, any streaming platform, I don't want to single anyone out, but it's basically the same kind of thing. It's like, okay, Close up here, close up there, quickly, shot, 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 quick shots. Like everything is like two, two, three second shot if you're lucky. And it just keeps cutting back and forth. What I like is if you see like a bunch of old movies, you see sometimes that they stick on a shot for like a minute and it's like, mm -hmm. it's like, whoa, it's it, sometimes that, that, that really helps. Like when you actually see the, the acting like happening, you actually see, you feel the energy more. It's, it's something happening. Like um, I recently uh, rewatched uh, one of my favorite movies, uh, Citizen Kane. A uh, few days ago, and if you look at that movie, I mean, you you just see these shots that sometimes play out for minutes at a time. Sometimes, you know, it, the the camera's just moving, so it changes that way. You know, the actors are moving through the shots, and obviously, he had like um, he had the technique of deep focus, so he didn't have to worry as much about that kind of the background and the foreground was in focus, which was revolutionary at the time. Uh, but I really kind of liked that. So I mean. I think for, for a lot of the shots, and we, we've done a little bit of this so far with editing, because that's where it really counts, but um, we've we've sometimes stuck in those big master shots, you know, for a minute or so, or or sometimes just, just letting a, a shot go. And then obviously we have the tr typical coverage too. Um, I like both, but I I like the fact that um, it's like in the in modern movies and, and TV series, it's just like your brain is almost overloaded. It just keeps cutting, cutting, cutting. You know, and I feel like so, it's good to do that sometimes, but it's also good to give it a break and just let a scene play out in one shot for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think that's awesome. I, I had a question too, and I, I mean, I think I've kind of maybe, I don't know if I've asked this before or kind of in some form, but I, I never really, I feel like I, whenever you come up with a story, like whenever you come up, you know, like me personally, like, you know, I like, a lot of times I'll like to make up something like if I hear like a really beautiful song or something and then I'm like, oh, that would be, you know, such a romantic piece for this kind of scenario or this scene. How do you typically come up with like, you know, you talked about how you came out with my last words, but, you know, you have 10 other screenplays, you know, different genres. How did you like what was like what was the moment like you thought of it? Was it like were you listening to music and you thought, oh, that'd be, you know, an awesome like car chase scene? Or do you typically like, you know, or is it like whenever you like, you know, for example, I know a lot of people, you know, maybe um, I know like my sister and I a lot of times will come up I with ideas when we um, see something funny happen or we're at like, you know, some kind of family gathering and, you know, you hear somebody talking, you're like, that would be a really great scene in this situation. How do you mm. typically come up with all these ideas? Yeah, well, uh, going back to what you said, um, that, that's totally true that I, I have a bunch of different screenplays and different genres. And that's really kind of the cardinal rule that I broke uh, in terms of the industry, which I believe in breaking all the rules because in the industry, <laughs> Everyone believes, I mean, if, if you go online or anywhere, uh, you, you'll hear that the biggest advice is just do kind of like one genre, just be known for one thing, one type of thing. Yes. Uh, I definitely do not believe in that. So especially because just for myself, you know, it would be really, I think it would be terrible to kind of do the same thing over and over again. Like if I'd have to do, I mean, and obviously there's style. So a lot of filmmakers have a style and that, that's a great thing. And probably I do too, you know, as, as will come out. Um, and probably, you know, that there's obviously recurring themes and stuff. I mean, th that's all great, but um, th there's a lot of writers, directors who do kind of things in the same style. And, and, you know, kind of as time goes by, sometimes they actually get called out on how similar sometimes that their movies are, or, you know, how they're, they're revisiting the same things. 
Um, so I definitely don't believe in kind of revisiting the same things too much. I mean, I have like a, a, all different genres. I have, you know, action, thriller, you know, mystery. I, I have a film noir, actually. Uh, so all medium noir, I should say. So all, all these kind of different uh, genres, which uh, are interesting to me, as well as, you know, drama and, and all those things. So, but it, go, going back to the other part of your question of in terms of like how you get ideas or or if like I take inspiration from life, I mean, sure, yes. of, course I, of course, I take inspiration from life. Um, not not necessarily. Obviously, I think I mentioned this before, but um, every you know screenplay that I write, it's not like it's autobiographical or it's stuff that's happened to me or like, mm -hmm. for example, that the main character in, in My Last Words, Noah, uh, he's not me. Uh, obviously, yes, there, yeah. there's aspects to his personality that are me. And, you know, again, yeah, that there's certain things that you pull from. I don't think I've pulled... I've never actually pulled an exact experience of something that exactly happened to me and like exactly translated it to the screen. I know people have done that, um, but uh, I haven't actually done like written out something that exactly happened to me uh, word for word, uh, which I'm happy about. I mean, and I think that um, with screenwriting, it's all about metaphor. Um, I know that uh, Paul Schrader, the, the writer of um, Taxi Driver, Raging Bull, a lot of those movies, uh, he definitely um, believes in, you know, the, the power of metaphor that you shouldn't write about something you shouldn't, you, it should be personal, but you should write about something that is a metaphor for like your the problems in your life or, or things you want to talk about, but it's not exactly, exactly what it is. It's he, he considers it like it has to be far enough that they're not touching, but like close enough that if you have two wires, there's like a spark. So th that's what he believes in, in like metaphor. And I, I think I believe that too. I so found um, a quote about writing that I think I attached to like one of the tweets that I sent out at one point, but I would just like to share it right now. It's by Michelle Segrest. I don't know who that is, but she's an <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it says, powerful writing is inspired by real life experiences. If you hear yourself say you can't make up this stuff, then you have a story to tell. Write it down, make it the foundation of your narrative, then make up stuff to make it better. Oh, I love that. I Beautiful, love it yeah. so much. I found it and I was like, I don't know who this person is. I'm sure she writes amazing <laughs> things because this quote is too good for her not to write amazing things. <laughs> I'm yeah. I'm using it. So shout out to you, Michelle. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> no, no, that, that, that's really a great quote. Yeah. So that that's definitely, it's just, it's what makes... It, it, it's that element of truth that's what makes it makes me think of that quote now and mm -hmm. I don't know I'm gonna like forever use that quote <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean uh, I remember a, a quote I, I read once I, I can't remember uh, who it was by so um, I'll just put this up to anonymous or, or uh, anyone can please fill in if they don't know who uh, said that but they said something like either write something worth reading or do something worth writing hmm Oh, I love that. Yeah. I might have seen that when I was looking up writing quotes, but I don't remember. <laughs> it's it's probably <laughs> one of those quotes that's attributed to like 70 people, you know, Ernest Hemingway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It, it's, it's so a Socrates, quote 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 you know. <laughs> but it's a good quote. It's a yeah. good quote, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I got really excited when you started talking about all of the genres you have in your screenplays. Do you know which one that you're going to do next? Like which which genre we should expect? Yeah, yeah that's exactly what uh, I'm deciding now. Um, I'm literally uh, combing through everything now that I feel like we're in a good place with uh, my last words. Um, I feel like it's it's in a place enough where I can devote some attention to something else. So. Um, <laughs> kind of looking over them uh, again now and deciding honestly what's the most feasible you know what's what would be the I mean th there's a couple of factors to consider I mean obviously I have a couple that are I know going to be for later on because they're you know th they are bigger budget things but then I also um, a lot of times write you know budget consciously so I, I write specifically knowing that okay we should be able to do this with a lower budget um, so it's kind of an interesting trick because you, you'd think that, um, doing that would be like, so restraining and everything. Oh, I can't have, oh, I, I just want to be totally free. I want to write this scene with 5,000 extra yes. and, you know, but uh, the thing is you, you can, 
cheat that out a lot. Like I was coming back to Citizen Kane, which I just saw. Um, that was not necessarily a low budget movie, but it wasn't a high budget movie either. I mean, they, they gave Orson Welles a lot of creative control, but they gave him, you know, a, a modest budget. And and that was really a high budget screenplay. It was like there, there was that there's that big political speech where he's giving the big political speech. And those are all not really the thousands of extras in the seats. They, they just had a couple and then they, they filled it in with like in those days, they obviously didn't have computer effects, but with other kind of effects. Um, but basically, in terms of writing with a uh, budget in mind, the interesting thing is that a lot of times it can help you because it kind of can tighten up the story or or get rid yeah. of unnecessary things um, which you actually don't need and which actually can kind of cut down the, the, the tension. Like uh, a lot of my works are kind of what I would consider first person stories. So it's kind of told from a character's mm -hmm. perspective. Um, which kind of tightens it a lot. And then you don't have a lot of extra unnecessary scenes. Like, um, for example, it's the same thing in uh, the movie Chinatown, um, which was written by Robert Town, uh, starring Jack Nicholson. But in that one, it's kind of very much a first person narrative. It, it follows, you know, Jack Nicholson through all these scenarios. And I've kind of always been drawn to that kind of writing, kind of like when you read a story in first person, only it's a screenplay. And that's something that you actually don't see a lot. Um, you don't see it too much in, in today's world, which I'm happy about. Um, I'm happy that I'm doing something that is not overdone. Uh, it's like your niche it makes it special. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a theme that, that runs through most, not, not all of my of my uh, screenplays and my writing in general. But uh, the interest, the whole point I wanted to say with uh, writing with limitations is that um, it can help you because I think uh, Stravinsky, the classical composer, he, he once said that he loves limitations because, you know, if he doesn't have limitations, then the options are limitless and he can, it's like, you know, it's <laughs> hard to start. Like if you know totally. that okay, I want to write, you know, something that's, that's um, not going to cost, you know, $500 million, it's not going to be like Avatar, um, that, then it, it kind of actually helps you because otherwise you have almost too many options if, if you have if you have a, a blank slate like james cameron like you know he can go to the studio he can do whatever he wants it's it's almost i think intimidating you know to say oh he, he can easily do a billion dollar movie he can do whatever you know i would say that that's almost being in a worse spot than i'm in that is so true really hard for me to make decisions so i agree like, yes. like it's it's like when you when you go to like a fancy restaurant or something and someone else is paying and you're like okay what's the budget and they're like no budget and you're like you don't really like what's the budget okay <laughs> <laughs> I, otherwise i could just order like 200 dollars worth of food like and then uh -huh. like, okay well it's just oh, yes, ex exactly you know bring on the caviar right yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no budget. All right, we'll get all of the appetizers, and I want to try two of the main course. Like, ooh, ooh, just just get one of everything on the menu. Yeah, <laughs> she's paying. She's paying. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you always uh, gonna go ahead? After this, you know, we're we're all going out to lunch. You know, we're all getting one of everything on the menu. Yes. Hey, yeah. Hey, we gotta go to one of those. Uh, it's, it's my treat. My treat. Hey. <laughs> Um, are you, so with, with your future films, are you planning to, uh, always use the vintage lenses or is that something very s special for my last words? That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, for this one, we used these, uh, vintage Zeiss super speed lenses. Um, I, I liked them. I, am um, interested in using them again. I'm also interested in trying new things. Um, one thing that, um, again, for, for some reason today, I it keeps fitting in. I keep bringing in, bringing up Citizen Kane um, because it keeps, <laughs> it keeps fitting in. I, I, this is not an agenda. Um, but Everybody the interesting go watch thing, Citizen Kane. Animal yes. get his money from the stock he put into it. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> clearly, yes. Uh, I, I was actually, yes, perfect. But um, the, the point is that um, with that movie, one thing that I like that we didn't do uh, in this movie is that they had, you know, that they used deep focus, which means that, you know, something in the background could be in focus, something in the foreground could be in focus. Th this mm. time we used, you know, you know, typical focus where, you know, the, the subject is in focus, the background is blurry, soft. Um, so I'm definitely interested in experimenting with more deep focus in, in the future. Uh, so possibly doing something like that because it allows for more movement, you know, more actual blocking in scenes. 
um, as opposed to something that I don't like as much, which is, you know, stand and deliver. I kind of like when a scene can unfold more, um, when you, you can move through the scene, you know, things change. And, and we've done a lot of that. Actually, one of the, mm. one of the themes um, in terms of shooting this movie was a lot of times we had one person's shot or either close up or, or medium shot or something, and it would turn into the other person's, you know, based on the blocking of the scene. So we've done, we've experimented with that, but I'd love to go more with that. So I'm definitely open to experimenting with um, different lenses, different styles, all of that. That's amazing. And you're, Evan, you're at, like in the moment you're writing something or you write every day, like today I'm going to write and you have like a schedule or only when you have ideas? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. Yeah, so th there's two schools of thought on that. Um, there's the people who say, okay, I'm like, uh, for example, I think Ernest Hemingway, he was one of those, he, he would write like a couple hours each morning. Uh -huh. You know, his thing was, you know, no, no matter what you did the night before, you know, you you, you get up the next day and you, you write, that's it, <laughs> no matter what. Um, and yeah, there's something to be said for that. Uh, so some people are like that, like uh, Somerset Maugham, the, the novelist, uh, was definitely like that. I remember saying that he, he would do like three hours every day, no matter what. Mm. Um, he did like classics. Uh, one of my favorite books of human bondage. Uh, he, he wrote that. Uh, but so there's that school. And, you know, some people take it to the extreme, like that they'll say, okay, I'm going to do, uh, it has to be like 300 words uh, each, each day. And then they'll literally stop when they get to 300, you know, no matter what. Um, so, so some people are like that. I would say I'm the opposite that um, I only go when I'm inspired. Um, so I, I I would rather not, you know, like, um, yeah, I, I would rather not do something when I'm not inspired or if it's not like I have to do it. Like, in other words, if you feel like you have to write something th then I'm writing it, but if, if you don't have ideas or something, I feel like yeah, you can do it. You can absolutely get something done. And, uh, there's definitely truth to the fact that you can, if you don't feel like you're doing good or something, you can always edit that. But I just feel like it comes better when you're inspired by something. Yeah. Um, the inspiration really strikes you. And that's really contrary to what a lot of, you know, professionals will say. Um, but th that's just my method. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, totally. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Well, um, I think uh, that was a great discussion. We can probably uh, hold it there. And uh, but by next episode, we'll I promise we'll, we'll finally get to the the meaning of life. You know, yeah. that, that's the whole episode yeah. of meaning the, of life, and you still that, haven't gotten to it. You we're, still I'm going to be. Um, we're going to have some great guests on next week. We're going to have Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. Yes, uh, they're going to be all the debating. Trilogy. Yes, they're, they're going to be all debating with uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau and Voltaire. <laughs> oh definitely tune in for that yeah so yeah. i'll be i'll be moderating uh after which they will all uh join in a boxing match so yes oh wow they're sure fascinated by podcast technology yes so, exactly well. but great uh, it was so great to talk to you um and so glad to have you a part of the team here at adam kiss productions thank you so much thank yeah. you yes thanks everyone So uh, does somebody know the, the contact info for uh, Socrates' agent? Maybe I could get in touch with uh, Ar maybe, Aristotle. Maybe, oh. maybe I have yes. it in context. I'm going to see and then I send it. Okay, yeah, <laughs> Sometimes yeah. on the YouTube channel and like their about section, there's like a for business email. Yeah. So I'll, I'll yeah. <laughs> the, the, the funny thing is that if they were around today, they'd probably have a YouTube channel. Oh, I know. Course, I definitely. wonder. Oh, I wonder definitely. what we... If they would even like you wonder sometimes like because you know even back then like when they would like argue like they never like you know so you know socrates and then his students and they would disagree and i just wonder if like now would they ever like would they ever even be able to reach an agreement today but, like i wonder uh, if they could if they were around today that they'd be writing angry comments yeah uh, <laughs> yes. yeah totally I, yes wasn't it Socrates, his method was to just constantly ask questions until the person stated. Yeah, exactly. That, like, that's the Socratic method. Like, no. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. How are you? Well, well, how are you? Yeah. How do you feel about yeah. that? Well, how do you feel about that? I would get so mad. I would be so irritated. <laughs>
Yeah, I learned about that in college, and then I went back to my roommate, and I was like, I can win any argument, yeah. <laughs> and I annoyed her so quickly. <laughs> no. what, is the answer to the, what is the answer to the question? Well, what do you think the answer to the question is? Yeah. Um, <laughs> great way to avoid answering questions, yeah. ask oh, the other yeah. person. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The That's method. the method when you go into politics. Oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yes, totally. Just, just don't, don't answer any questions. Just, I just ask yeah. them. Yes. <laughs> with a question yeah. yes <laughs> well, what is your stance on on blank well you know i, I believe that you know both sides are you know <laughs> yeah. Yeah. both sides have something to say about that i believe that both sides have something to say and that both sides have something to say and both sides have something yes. to say. <laughs> you should Terrible. ask both sides yeah so I, i'm i'm going to run for office now that i'm trained you know <laughs> we're, 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 convert, we're converting exactly. now it's uh, forget it forget about this this is you know adam kiss for president you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It, it, it has the same akp it yeah works. oh yeah, yeah. yeah exactly yeah that would be great publicity for your films that would be, yeah, that would be great <laughs> we're going to do that running for president. we just have to lie about my age and then you know <laughs> yes wait, wait what is the minimum age for president now wait, you have to be, have to be 35 actually Oh, oh 30, really? I was thinking 40. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Okay. So that's we would just put a fake mustache on and, you know. <laughs> and that's it. 